we are at Exodus 23, verse 12, and it's interesting, we have all these threes we've noticed, sets of three laws, and here we have a set of three, the one we had yesterday, this one, and the next one. There are three laws, and at the center, as in so many times in the Hebrew Bible, in these sets of three here and there, the middle one is often the, the predominant, the, the dominant, the, the most important item. Here, look at the, what the law of the three that's the most important is. It's verse 12. Six days you are to do your work, but on the seventh day you shall cease from labor so that your ox and your donkey may rest, and the son of your female slave, as well as your stranger, may refresh themselves. So here's the original seventh day Sabbath, and again, a reiteration, it's put here and it's described, it's in the center of this set of three laws having to do with sixes and sevens. And here it is put out there in the center. It's, this is the place of prominence. Now notice again, the Sabbath is the time commandment. It has to do not just with one day and seven, it has to do with all seven days. There's 168 hours uh, with which we have to do. And in one 24 hour period, we call the Sabbath rest, but there's six days of labor. This is all part of one commandment. Now there's another thing you may or may not have noticed here. Look again at the verse, verse 12. Notice what it says, so that your ox and donkey may rest. And then when it talks about people, notice what it says, and the son of your female slave, as well as your stranger, may refresh themselves. So the animals rest during the Sabbath, but the humans refresh themselves, okay? So there's something different going on. An animal, you know, an animal doesn't read from the Bible on the Sabbath. An animal doesn't gather for prayer with other animals on the Sabbath, but people do. Sabbath is a special day, the special day of worship, God's seventh day Sabbath. And so this is a day where we gather together for spiritual refreshing. And there's one more thing we might bring up here, and that is the difference between stopping and cessation. Okay, so on the Sabbath, you cease, you cease from all these other activities, but it really doesn't mean you come to a grinding stop. On Sabbath, we don't kind of like freeze in place and do nothing. Uh, but that's the way some have interpreted it over time, and that's, that's not it. On Sabbath, we kind of shift from these things that we're doing to these things that we're doing. Okay, We're just changing activities from these things to these things. If we're involved in secular labor, yes, we stop, but it doesn't mean we just um, stop doing anything. Instead, it means we re-gear because it's the Sabbath. Now we get together, we plan, we get things together, we go to church, we may sit in fellowship with people in the church, we may go for a, a walk together, uh, have friendship together, we may do a Bible study together. Uh, we go at Christmas time, we may go out and go caroling door to door in the evening. Uh, we, we do things together. So Sabbath is not a time of, un, of not doing anything. Sabbath's a time where we do spiritual things. So dif difference there between doing nothing and keeping Sabbath. Doing nothing is not keeping Sabbath, all right? Be careful with your lay activities. If, you, if your business is to come home and lay down, uh, something is wrong. You're using up too much energy during the week. You need to have energy to do spiritual things together with brothers and sisters on the Sabbath. All right, a word for you and a word for me. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.